Hello, my name is Baya DeWald. You can reach me at Baya at bdbaexecutives.com. In this short video, I'm going to discuss moving a database to an earlier version of SQL Server. Why would we want to move from a later version to an earlier version of SQL Server? I have a few reasons. First one is acquisitions. The versions of SQL Server certified in each enterprise may differ. They may or might not match. What that means is that each enterprise has to certify a particular version of SQL Server, which they feel that their application runs very well on. We don't want to disappoint our customers. Therefore, once we figure out which version of SQL Server works well for our application, we will use that until we have a good reason to upgrade. I know that a lot of database administrators, including myself, want to upgrade to the latest version just as soon as possible. But unfortunately, for businesses of various sizes, especially for large enterprises, it's not going to be an overnight deal. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to make sure that all applications that run smoothly on SQL Server 2017 will also continue to run smoothly on 2019 or whatever the latest version of SQL Server might be. Another reason is that a non-DBA person may develop an application with the latest version of SQL Server. They develop it using SQL Server Developer Edition or Express Edition. But after they expose that application to a group of users, maybe through a demonstration um, or kind of a test type of scenario, then this application needs to be moved to a production server. And the production server may or might not have SQL Server 2019. And if it doesn't, then you have to migrate those data structures and potentially some of the metadata into an earlier version of SQL Server. The last reason I'm going to touch on is an attempt to upgrade, which seems to be successful at first, but after a while you recognize that there are issues. So let's say you upgraded from 2017 to 2019. Your QA team did a fantastic job of smoke testing your application, but after a while you found that there is some regression. There is an issue with a particular function of application that is just not working well with 2019. And unfortunately, you don't have the time or the budget to employ expensive consultants. You don't have the time or budget to employ Microsoft to help you troubleshoot those issues. And you just have to go ahead and migrate back to your previous version. What can you do? Well, it's not as simple as taking a backup on the latest version and restoring it to an earlier version. That simply does not work. Nor can you detach a database from, let's say, SQL Server 2019 and attach it to 2016. That also won't work. So you have to pursue one of these options that I'm listing here. First one is to script out the schema and data using Management Studio. And then subsequently use either Management Studio or SQL Command Utility to create that database and import that data into an earlier version of SQL Server. The second option is to use SQL Package Utility. If you're not familiar with this utility, I highly recommend that you become familiar with it because it has multiple applications that are very, very useful. So let me go ahead and jump into SQL Server Management Studio. As you can see, I have two instances running on the same machine. I have Lenovo PC 2016, and as the instance name says, it is SQL Server 2016. And I have Lenovo PC, the default instance, which runs SQL Server 2012. So I'm going to take this test downgrade database, which is a very simple database. I'm showing you the script for creating it. It is very simple. It has only two tables. Each table has one record. I'm going to take that and move it to SQL Server 2012. So the first option is to generate SQL scripts directly in Management Studio. And if you haven't used this utility, you can see that it allows you to pick and pick and choose the objects that you want to script 
or you can script the entire database. More importantly, you need to choose the specific options that I'm showing here. As you can see, you have options to script just the data or just the schema, but I need to script both schema and data. Also notice that by default, since I'm connected to SQL Server 2016, it scripts for SQL Server 2016. Of course, this won't work because I am going to create the database on 2012. So I need to choose SQL Server 2012. Furthermore, there are some options for tables and views. I'll let you figure out what options are right for you, but obviously if you do have uh, primary keys, foreign keys, indexes, full text indexes, and so on and so forth, you need to include them in your script. Notice that we have an option to open the script in the new query window, or we can save it as a script file. First, we'll, we'll look at the script in a query window and see how lengthy it is. Now, remember that this database only has two tables, and each table only has a single record. Now that the script is generated, we can see that it's more than 100 lines long. What would happen if we had hundreds or maybe even thousands of tables and each table had millions of records? The script would be gigantic and opening it up in a SQL Server Management Studio query window would be impractical. That is why we have the option to execute the script directly from SQL command utility from the command prompt using the SQL command utility. I'm going to get to that in just a second. But firstly, let me tell you that the only change that you really need to make here is to ensure that you specify the correct paths for your data file, for your transaction log file. Of course, in this case, I only have one single data file and single transaction log file that may or might not always be the case. And other than that, I don't have to change anything else. I have already saved the file under test downgrade test downgrade script 2012.sql so I'm going to go ahead and execute the script from SQL command uh, utility using SQL command utility all I have to specify in this case is Lenovo PC that is my 2012 instance and then the input file and I can go ahead and run this of course this is using uh, trusted connections if you needed to you could specify the um, credentials for a system administrative type of user with the username and password. But for the purposes of this demonstration, this will suffice. There is my test downgrade database. If I were to expand and look at the list of tables, I see that those tables have been created successfully. And I can also verify that I have the data. Again, as I said, you know, if your database is large, if your database is complex, please be sure to save the output of a script into a file and then use SQL command utility to actually create the database and populate it with data. The second option that I'm going to discuss is SQL package utility. So SQL package utility is also very simple to use. All you have to do is specify the action. In this case, the action is going to be export. SQL package does have other options, other actions, but I'm not going to discuss them in this video. So the action is going to be export. It will specify the source server name, which in my case is going to be Lenovo PC slash SQL 2016, source database name, and then the target file is going to be where I save the output of SQL package. Now be sure that you use BAC PAC as the extension of the file and you can name it name the file whatever you wish but you have to use the BAC PAC file extension so that will generate the file and subsequently I can come to the management studio and use that file to import a data to your application and notice that the source and source database name doesn't have to be reused. You can call the database whatever you want. And 
I'm going to go ahead and start this wizard of importing the .rtr application. It's asking for the backpack file location. The location could be the local disk, which is what it's going to be in this case, or you could import it from Azure. Once this file is generated, we should be able to import that. Notice that there is a gotcha, there, you know, there's multiple gotchas here uh, that you can run into, but multiple issues that you can run into. The first one that I'm going to identify here is that you need to remove a couple of permissions from the public role. I have already done so to make the demo relatively quick, but the 2016 database grants the public role a couple of permissions. And those permissions are view any column encryption key definition and view any column master key definition. So you have to remove these permissions before you'll be able to successfully import a 2016 database scripted out using the SQL package utility into 2012. Another uh, issue that often comes up is if you do have Windows authentication, uh, if you use Windows authentication users in your database, you need to remove them before generating your backpack file. And now that the file has been generated, I'm going to go ahead and find it on my local disk. There it is. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to specify the database name. I already have test downgrade, so let's just call it test downgrade 2. I can verify the data file and transaction log file path. Then I'm going to click finish and it will happily import that database for me. But back to the Windows authentication just as, a, as an extra gotcha, extra tip. If you do have um, a database that, that uses Windows authenticated logins, as users go ahead and remove those first before using SQL package to create the backpack file and then once the database is created on your 2012 instance or whatever the earlier version might be you can go ahead and add those logins back and the corresponding users but there it is my database has been imported successfully I've got the tables again if I were to uh, query each of those tables will have one record or in this case two records but that is the uh, video basically uh, the reasons we already discussed and we have a couple of options for migrating the database to an earlier version we can use the uh, utility within management studio to script out the schema and data the other option is to use SQL package utility to generate a backpack file and then use SQL Server Management Studio to import a data tier application. In this case, the data tier application means a database. So in a nutshell, if you do use the first option, be careful to choose the supported version when you are scripting. And then if the script is very large and complex, and go ahead and use the SQL command. If you do go with the second option, which is probably the option that I prefer, this with the SQL package utility, you need to go ahead and remove any unsupported features, any options that are not gonna work. Go ahead and remove them before you generate the backpack file. Now, keep in mind that the backpack file will be generated regardless, even if you don't remove those features, but then when you attempt to import the data to your application, it's going to fail. Thank you for watching this video. As I've said before, my name is Baya DeWald. You can reach me at Baya at bdbaexecutives.com. I hope this has been helpful, and if you do have any issues, feel free to reach out to me.